Oida, was geht ab Leute? Team Bubble hier. Heute mal mit einer Top 10 und zwar die 10 besten Momente von der YCS Lumini 2015. Habe ich mir mal die ganzen Feature Matches angeschaut und da waren ein paar coole Momente dabei und die werde ich euch heute mal zeigen. Ich glaube ich werde das Video in zwei Teilen, also Platz 10 bis 6 und dann 5 bis 1, weil es dann glaube ich ein bisschen zu lang wird sonst. Ich hoffe es wird euch gefallen. Da haben wir auf Platz Nummer 10 einen Clip von der siebten Runde. Und zwar Top Deck der Spieler unten ein Hero Liz, nachdem der Gegner mit ziemlich guten Zügen schon mal ein Feld von äh, Dark Law und ein paar Verdecken beseitigen konnte und um alles herum gespielt hat und der Hero Spieler hatte dann nichts mehr und dann topdeckt der Hero List. <lacht> All right. <laughs> so, okay. So he's going to pay half of his life points here to be uh, to be able to go and search for a shadow mist, or to summon an elemental hero from his deck, which is probably going to be shadow mist. And then shadow mist's effect triggers, and he can go get a mass change. However, this isn't as good as it potentially could be because Unicor um, is able to negate the effects of the extra deck monsters, so that might not be. Might not be as useful in this particular situation. Right. Let's take a look at his hand. I don't think Marcelo has um, has a Valkyrie to stop the attack no. over Unicor, though. So Marcelo only got a Necros of Brian Egg. Yeah. So that's. I think this is very much going through here, and he's going to be able to just take that out. And there's the elemental hero Bubble Man. Yeah. So so many special summons here. He's going to make a Dweller. And then he's gonna mass change that into a Dark Law. I think Dark Law's gonna go over the Unicorn. Yeah. All of that pretty straightforward. Yep. And it's it's one of these games where one player really doesn't mind losing his own cards as long as his opponent is also losing cards. Uh, in this case, the hero player. Yep. Generally speaking, he does have the stronger monsters, and uh, Marcelo's deck needs to go into these combos, like make use of several cards in the same turn to unleash those powerful plays. Whereas yeah. Simone, very often he just has to draw like one card and suddenly he's got all he needs. Yep. So he's the one that is uh, getting a lot more out of this situation with both players losing cards. Yep. And now Marcelo is left with just the Necros of Brianek, draws another card for his turn. But don't forget the ritual spell cards in the graveyard although the abyss dweller just shut down that line of plays auf platz nummer 9 haben wir auch aus der neunten runde einen moment und zwar hat der cosmos spieler einen move ausgepackt mit instant fusion den nicht mal die kommentatoren gesehen hatten und die waren die ganze zeit verblüfft wieso er mit den zwei vierern nicht auf castell oder 101 gegangen ist um äh, valkyrios zu beseitigen und dann hat er instant fusion aktiviert und dann damit den Valkyrus äh, beseitigt. Ja, und again, ja, so he decides to use Trishula. That, I think, if if I, if this was me playing Cosmos right now, I would totally be thinking, awesome, that's a free <laughs> Trishula, <laughs> because he's going to be able to make a rank four play here and just go to go to Cosmo Town on that <laughs> Valkyrus using a rank four play, and he's going to have his farm girl in hand, which. Yeah, I think I think he even potentially can just win here. Oh yeah. Also, we just stand corrected. Um, we, it's not just the 256 best players. Everybody with a X3 or better record is making it to two day two, which translates to 320 players. So quite a few guys, in fact, more than usually that um, advance to day two. Yeah. And uh, thank you to Rudy, our um, contributor to the written coverage, who pointed that out immediately, yeah. like uh, like a stream sniper. <laughs> <laughs> that was my sniper impression. Did you like it? Y yes. Good. Uh, so, <laughs> so here we go. He's going to look through this extra deck here and decide what's the best way to deal with this Valkyrus. Now I'm thinking uh, potentially a 101 or a Castell is probably the best option. And um, we have seen a couple of players yesterday not playing 101. And even though I'm not familiar with all the Italian card names, yeah, he's I, he's I don't not playing 101. Yeah, I don't so see it's gonna be 101. Castel. So yeah, and it's quite interesting. He does play Castel. Um, yeah. 
That's actually super interesting. He's playing Ancient Fairy Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. If you manage to get Ancient Fairy Dragon off on Cosmo Town, Cosmo Town, you get to add a card from Cosmo Town, and you get to add another Cosmo Town. Wow, that's <laughs> that's an interesting that's, one. That's great. And um, but w what I'm wondering about, without trying to um, sound offensive or anything, but it feels to me like Fabio is really considering this next move when when. We just made it sound like it's kind of obvious. You want to go for Castell here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Or are there like that many other options? I mean, he's looking at his extra deck for the second time now. I think. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm unsure as to why he he could have made a rank four play that dealt with the the Valkyrus and then summoned a, a farm girl. I mean, th like don't get me wrong. It's very very possible that he was playing around effect Vela. Mm. That's really possible. Okay. But, but even even th actually no no that's a that's a silly thing to say. I, he's not even playing. He can't play around effect Villa there because he still has to main phase two attack. Oh okay. I, I've not okay. I'm just confused now. <laughs> Wh <laughs> Wh why? <laughs> why is this Abyss Dweller coming out? Ah okay okay. Instant fusion into Panzer Dragon. Panzer Dragon dies in the end phase and pops the Valkyrus. That's it. That's what he's done. Gonna do. I think. There we go. Best Panzer Dragon, and okay. then end phase, Panzer Dragon dies, and... Is that a better play than going for the Castell? Um, probably, because Castell is then safe, and he has an Abyss Dweller. Yeah. So he's managed to prevent him in multiple ways. That's cool. actually the first time ever on stream we've seen Panzer Dragon being used in that way. Auf Platz Nummer 8 haben wir von der zweiten Runde das Feature Match zwischen Paul Cooper und Markus Patel und Paul Cooper hat halt Chicken Race FTK gespielt, was man heutzutage nicht mehr so oft sieht, seit Denko Sekka draußen ist, werden Burn Decks und Exodia und Final Countdown halt absolut nicht mehr gespielt, deswegen fand ich das ganz interessant. And with that, we're good to go. Okay. So, Paul so Cooper on the left. Let's see who's gonna go first here. This is, this is very, very crucial. crucial. Yeah. This might be one of the most important die rolls. A 7 for Paul Cooper, that's the average result. It's a 3 and... We didn't see what we the other dice was. What the other was, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, so exciting. All right, we see an upstart goblin, and uh, I think there was a graph, definitely in the hand of uh, Marcus. Uh, here. Oh, okay, and the then the field griefing as well. Yeah, I think that might be Rubik, mm. but I, but I'm unsure. Yeah. But but um, the long story short of it is that Marcus doesn't have Phoenix Wind Wing Blast. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's that's an important thing to say here. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, um, let's have a look at Paul Cooper's hand. This is a great hand so far. Uh, how crucial is it to have a Royal Magic Library? A uh, hundred percent. You, you, you really need to get to Royal Magical Library as soon as possible. But is it okay that you can draw into it really early on with cards like um, Trade In and the Destiny Heroes or something like that? Yeah, it has to be really soon. Now, um, here's a quite a strange card, Fusion Conscription. Uh, what this card allows you to do is search your deck for a fusion material uh, if you reveal the the fusion monster or mm -hmm. something to that effect i think you're not allowed yeah, to you reveal a fusion monster from your extra deck and one of the materials listed on that card from your deck or graveyard um, and you add one of the fusion materials from your deck or your graveyard and add it to your hand yeah and you cannot normal summon or set that monster yeah, and that's pretty much it. So basically, it's just uh, thinning out the deck a little bit. Yes. So here we see Paul just going at it. He's going to keep on playing his cards here and really just digging through this deck to try and get to the Royal Magical Libraries. Mm -hmm. So here's a brand new card that we have that was just released in the core set named Chicken Game. Yeah, Chicken Game, one of the cards that, that makes this deck a lot better than it used to be. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So it's a field spell, and you can pay 1,000 life points to activate one of three effects. Um, the one that's relevant here is that you get to draw one card. Right. <laughs> yeah, basically, so so you have another way to thin out your deck. And there's also a target for terraforming. Yes, exactly. Which, which should be mentioned, yeah. Yeah. And again, it's a target for pseudo space, another card that Paul Cooper is playing, which allows you to banish one um, field spell from your graveyard. And pseudo space becomes that uh, field spell. Right. So Paul Cooper has actually drawn a, a life equalizer quite quickly here, which isn't isn't really what he wants. Yeah, he wants that, but that's one of the cards he wants to draw very late. Yeah. In in his turn, rather than very early. Yeah, and then we see pseudo space being played here, so he's going to be able to draw one more card. 
And um, uh, what does it feel like to to play like sit across from one of these decks and and just watch your opponent go nuts with all of these draws and and doing all of these things? Yeah, it's it's pretty scary because your life is not in your own hands. Mm. There's a magical mallet. I I think you can feel pretty good about that at least because the opponent is is losing cards in his hand, so yep. to speak. Yeah. So magical mallet here is it, it, it shuffle it's everything. A, a minus. Bargain. Yep. Because you're playing Magical Mallet and getting back less than you put in. Yeah. So Paul Cooper down to four cards in hand. Which is still not too bad. I mean, he's, he's got one on the field, so he's still very much in this, I guess. Oh, yeah. He didn't really lose any cards. And there's a pot of uh, uh, duality. Yeah. And there is there's the Royal library. Magical library. And let's see if he can now suddenly sh like shift gears, so to speak. Yeah. So and this go into turbo mode. Um, he did have a trade in and a magical explosion in hand, so not very useful. Nope. So he's gonna play the mu mallet again, the yep. magical mallet. So as we were speaking about earlier about the Royal Magical Library, that now has one counter on it. As soon as that reaches three, you can remove all those counters to draw a card. Right. So two draws only for Paul Cooper, and he needs to find something that will allow him to dig. Yeah, and I th further into his deck, he didn't and. That's, That's pretty much it. it. Yeah. So so is there is no other win condition for this deck. You no. you only go for this combo and if you don't hit it, you're basically going home. Yeah. So Auf Platz Nummer 7 haben wir von der dritten Runde Umut Sergen, der in einem Shadow Mirror Match spielt und der Gegner hat Konstrukt draußen und für Shadow gibt es da nicht viele Wege, den wieder zu beseitigen und da packt Umut den originalen Trischula aus. All right. Second turn. Yeah. In extra time in our round three only. Yep. Well, if, if all the rounds are going to take this long, I it's going to be a we're gonna We're going to be here a while. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, because we're not used to this after the first and the second round that we're like over in a... In like a flash. Yeah, you just blinked and it was over. Like some kind of magical explosion. <laughs> Right. That was an amazing joke, Ollie. That was that yeah, was a, I know, I'm that was a subpar laugh for such a good joke. I know, Rob. When when this happens with Rob on the stream, he's then going to be quiet for the next five minutes and containing his laughter, yeah, because he, he <laughs> he's just like holding it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. the Denko Seka sent to the graveyard. Yep. Not that useful right now. No. Um, yeah, so it's just this. This game has been very, very grindy, shall we say? Yeah. And there's the first mathematician that we've seen. Yeah. Which is quite strange, considering. There, there were times the when we we didn't have much to talk about in Shadol, and we were just like debating whether um, Armageddon Knight or Mathematician was the right choice. Um, these two guys are both going with Mathematician. They're actually maxing out on it. Yeah. So, okay, this is interesting. Umut may be trying to make an armory arm play. Now, that might just be the me being return. crazy. Or, he could be making Trishula. <laughs> <laughs> like the good old version of Trishula. Yes. Not, not the yes. Necros Trishula that yeah. you usually see all the time. Yeah, Trishula is actually my favorite card in the whole game. So um, I'm quite excited about the the thought of this, but he's he's immediately regretting that somehow. Yeah. Come on, come on, just or, just, or just play just play Trishula, please, please just play Trishula. That that'd make my day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is there reason not to? That's the question. Well, it 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 would deal with that construct pretty swiftly. It would just be able to banish it immediately, and then you know. Trick Clown just gets disappeared real quick. Okay, so he's going to attack that Falco. And he has nothing to summon back with it, which is great. He's going to attack into that. And then after that, whether he's going to pay for it... Yeah, so he decides to pay. But that looks like a, a much, much better line of plays. Yeah, I know, but it's not a Trishula, is it? Yeah, but we could still... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could still see Trishula here. Yeah, it's not like... Um, Okay, this is interesting. So he gets to summon the Shadolka and attack into the Trick Clown. So Trick Clown's effect can only use once per turn, and now we're going to see a Trishula to deal with that construct. And Federico is getting ready to banish it already. Yeah. And yeah, yes. there is a three-headed dragon 
Wow. <laughs> it's been a yeah. while since we've seen it that. It has huh? been a while, and yeah. that feels so good to it, see Trishula being played again. In case you guys forgot how these cards are called, those are Synchro Monsters. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's not always about the, the blue ones, the fusions, yep. and the purple ones, the rituals, and of course the Exceed Monsters. No, there are also Synchro Monsters, and they used to be extremely powerful. Yeah, so this, this being the original Trishula has an even more powerful effect than the Necros version of Trishula. Uh, this one, you can, even without your opponent having a card on the field, in the hand, and in the graveyard, you can banish one from each zone. Right, and now Umud is in the most commanding position. <laughs> yeah, there we in. go. <laughs> so und auf Platz 6 haben wir gleich die erste Runde, das Feature Match, und zwar hat dieser Italiener, der auch bei der Weltmeisterschaft war, gegen ein Mädchen, das Batteriemann gespielt hat, verloren. Also ich will nicht sagen, dass es schlimm ist, gegen ein Mädchen zu verlieren. Ich habe auch mal auf der YCS gegen ein Mädchen verloren, aber man unterschätzt sie auf jeden Fall. Und dann spielt sie auch noch ein Deck, das man unterschätzt. Und er war halt gerade ziemlich gut unterwegs, hat äh, seine die italienische Meisterschaft gewonnen, dann Europameisterschaft, Top 4 und dann Weltmeisterschaft war er auch mit dabei. Und dann trifft er halt auf ein Mädchen, das er unterschätzt und Batteriemann, das er auch unterschätzt. Und dann wird er halt hart geknechtet. Fand ich ganz lustig. And Alessandro has no response here. Yeah, he's got a, a karma card with no cards in hand and a fire lake with no burning monsters, burning a monsters of the burning abyss. That's quite <laughs> a mouthful on the field. So again, yeah. we, we see what we saw in the in the game before that he does have some cards, but he cannot activate them or use them yeah. in any useful way. I mean, um, this that that fuel cell that she's adding to her hand, she can just special summon that right away, and the other one as well. So I think I think he just loses now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's taking a lot of damage, and yeah, um, I think yeah, that is it. Yeah, it, it is enough. The the tons of damage was enough. <laughs> the wow, the tons of damage was enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coming back from a from a early defeat in the first game, Roberta Fagini turns things upside down, and you can't help but feel sorry for Alessandro Di Patria, the national champion. Yep. Wow, he's he's being shown how it's done. I think we should go outside and tell everyone that. They should be playing battery <laughs> and not battery yeah. men. Battery men are a thing. And wow, Roberta Faccini, what a start into the day for her. Yeah. Taking down the national champion, yeah. former world championship competitor. And, and this is basically like a roller coaster, right? For Alessandro earlier this year, wins the national championship, feels like he's here, goes to the European championship, ends up in the top four, feels like he's even higher than before, goes to the world championship, doesn't do so well, maybe he goes a little down, and now suddenly he loses in the first round of YCS Remedy. So talk about it like a major drop there yeah well uh, 